Time now for the Nick Hart Show, our weekly chat with the head coach of the Gibson Southern Titans, Nick Hart. It's brought to you by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, a and Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Homes, Carriage Inn, Chips, SellMyTees.com, by Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC, Shelter Insurance, by Davis Brothers, Daylight Land Management, LLC, Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Dillbeck Properties, Diversified Instruments, Duke Energy, Emerson Cattle Company, ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Langford, by Fast Break Convenience Stores, by Flanders, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Foster Construction, Ryman Land Service LLC, by Hobstadt Summerfest, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum, Hillside Gardens Landscaping and Garden Center, HMC Gears, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Nathan Belote, by Jarbo Tax Service, JMCO Technologies, Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated, K&K Excavating Incorporated, KC Fuquay, State Farm Agent, Kathy Solman Photography, Key Construction Company Incorporated, Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC, by Lively Machine Company, Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, also by Parker Excavating, Perfect Climate Heating, Air and Plumbing, by Pole Concrete Construction, Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated, by Pro Rehab of Hobstock, Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency, Rawhide Golf Supplies, Ryano Family Fitness, Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage, Shearer Monument, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, the Titan Youth Football League, by Varnado Construction, Vomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated, We Simply Clean, by Whitledge Tree Service, and Young's Auto Body. The Nick Hart Show, a special production of the Wabash Valley College Radio TV and Digital Media Department. First, before the questions with Coach Nick Hart, a statistical look at last week's win against Danville Community High School. First, Zach Foster, rushing wise, 17 attempts, 19 yards. Bo Rose, 5 attempts, 9 yards, and a touchdown. Chase Thaxton, number 3, 7 attempts, 16 yards, an average of 2.3, the most on the team last Friday. 25, Gunnar Alexander, 6 attempts, 7 yards, a long rush of 4. Passing wise, Zach Foster was 13 for 25, threw for 172 yards, a pass rating 54.1. He had one touchdown to two interceptions. We look at receiving wise, Seth Parsons, six receptions, 38 yards. Chase Thaxton, one reception, three yards. Maddox Potts, three receptions, 99 yards, a 53 yard touchdown catch as well. Connor Alexander, one target, one reception, five yards. Grant Stinson, two receptions, 27 yards, a long of 16, an average of 13 and a half. And now to the namesake of this show, Coach Nick Hart. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Coach Nick Hart Show. I'm Riley Angel here, as always, with Coach Nick Hart. Coach, first of all, just going to get right into it. A win is a win on Friday. Might not have looked as pretty as you wanted it to, but you're 1-0. Yeah, and I mean, that's the goal. Um, you know, a little Herm Edwards, uh, you, you play to win the game. Um, and, you know, that's what's important. And I thought, um, especially uh you know the way the game was going the first three quarters um it, it showed a lot about our kids uh you know to, to find a way to win that football game um I'm sure we'll get more into it I thought defensively um you know we played really really well um against a, a good team and you know offensively um you know I was really 
disappointed in our, our execution and, and, and the way we played some things. And a lot of that had to do, I think, Danville – um, is really good defensively, um, and, and that's why you play those games. Uh, you know, we, we did some stuff offensively that, that maybe you can get away with, uh, you know, playing like that against, uh, you know, some people, but, uh, you know, a team like Danville is, is going to make you pay for those mistakes. So, uh, you know, but like you said, uh, a, a win's a win, and, and again, I think it, it shows a lot about our team to, to not play extremely well on the offensive side of the ball, and, um, you know, Defense kind of kept us in the game, and, and we were able to to find a way to win the game late. And in that first quarter, Danville was able to get a lot of chunk yardage on some big plays. What type of defensive adjustments did you make from that first quarter on to keep them exactly where they were? Um, I'd like to you know say um, brag and say we we made some great adjustments, um, but you know I think it was more just our guys uh, settling down, you know, we, we don't have a, a lot of uh, Friday night experience um, in, in the back end of, of the defense. And, um, you know, I think just you know, we were there. Um, it's not like we, we blew coverages um, and, and let them free. We were there. Um, you know, we just, we were a step late uh, getting there. And I thought as, as the game went on and, um, you know, our, our guys that didn't have a lot of experience got into the flow um, of the game a little bit. Uh, they, they did a lot better job of, of playing over the top of, of some of that play action that they were running out of the flex bone. So um, no real adjustments, just, you know, uh, us kind of settling down a little bit and uh, and, uh, you know, you know, being being there a step quicker um, than, than what we were the first couple of drives. When we return to the Coach Nick Hart Show, we talk about Connor Wiry and Bo Rose and their contributions to the win last week. You're dialed in to the Nick Hart Show, brought to you by Whole Concrete Construction, Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated, by Pro Rehab of Hobstock, Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency, Rawhide Golf Supplies, Ryano Family Fitness, Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage, Shearer Monument, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, the Titan Youth Football League, by Varnado Construction, Vomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated, We Simply Clean, by Whitledge Tree Service, and Young's Auto Body. Time to go back now to the Nick Hart Show. And for me, I would like to focus on defensive back Connor Wiry. It seemed at the, at the very beginning of the game, he might have struggled a little bit with that Scrafton matchup, but really improved as the game went on. What do you have to say about that? Um, I thought Connor, um, especially in the second half, um, played uh, as about a well of a half as, as we've had a corner play because um, I think the Scrafton kid's very good. Um, and, and the quarterback um, is a great player too. Um, so we we knew those were kind of like their two guys uh, going into the game. Um, and I'm bad with names, but also seven, um, you know, uh, was, was a good playmaker for him. Um, so, uh, you know, I thought Connor, um, especially in the second half, is that they tried to, you know, there was a fade uh, down their sideline on like a third and five that he played. Uh, maybe could have been offensive pass interference. Um, he, he was in such great position and squeezed the kid to the sideline. And, um, you know, I think their kid kind of yanked him down to, to keep him from from intercepting the ball. Um, I, I thought Connor, um, you know, really for the entire night did a great job. Um, you know, against a, a really good wide receiver. And, um, you know, especially in the second half, I thought he did. And then Bo Rose not only made a big impact defensively with that defensive uh, touchdown, but in the short yardage game in the offense. Tell me a little bit about Bo. Oh, yeah, Bo's, uh, you know, a special football player. Um, I think, uh, you know, he's a three-year starter on defense. Um you know, we used him in some uh, short yardage stuff last year. And then, you know, maybe even when we got in the playoffs, that role expanded a little bit. Um, and, and that's where, you know, we kind of want to keep him right now is is in some of that short yardage goal line type of stuff, um, you know, and keep the hits uh, off of him. Um, I think it's 
it's really hard to like play middle linebacker and running back um, and, and not get dinged up as you go through the season just because it's a lot of contact going uh, on your body. So you know, we're going to try and limit those hits on him um, as we go through the regular season. Uh, but, you know, he's a, a, a really special football player. Um, he was kind of the quarterback of our defense getting us lined up and, um, you know, he does a great job of finding the ball on defense. And then, uh, you know, obviously he, he brings some, some versatility, um, over to the offensive side as well. And then it seemed like really everyone was a part of the offense last week. Was that part of the game plan to get everyone a touch or a target? Um, no, I, I think it's kind of. Um, you know, just the way we've played offense, uh, over the years, um, you know, rarely do we just try and get the ball the, to a specific guy. Um, you know, it just kind of depends on coverage and, and how they're playing and, you know, what, how the, what concepts called, um, you know, we, we did spray it around, uh, you know, pretty good with a bunch of guys getting catches and, you know, four or five guys got to carry, um, no, it, it wasn't by design. And, you know, I think being a little bit honest, we were we were searching, um, you know, to, to kind of get a spark and, and get the get the offense rolling a little bit. I think that probably played in it a little bit as well. And then obviously last week we talked about week one mistakes and there were some of those uh, on Friday. What's the focus in practice this week and how much improvement do you expect to see from week one to this Friday? Um, well, offensively, we're, we're going to have to see a lot of improvement. Um, I think, um, you know, I, I think the talent's there. Um, I think uh, going on year 13 here um, and maybe including all my years as an assistant before that, that's probably the poorest um, we've executed offensively uh, in a game. And again, I think Dan, Danville's very good defensively. I don't want to um, um, take away from what they did. They capitalized on some – like we had two fourth downs where we just missed the signal and, and ran the incorrect play. Um, there, there was just a lot of self-inflicted stuff. Um, and I think that's a little bit common when things aren't going well. Um, guys press and, and try and do a little bit too much, and then that makes things worse. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we've got to get a lot better offensively. Um, I thought our perimeter blocking, like in our screen game, and we try and stretch the field horizontally, horizontally and vertically. Um, I thought our stuff to to the to the perimeter um, was not very good, and and the way they were playing us front wise, um, the run game was going to have to get to the perimeter, um, and, and we just did a really um, you know poor job of of blocking um, on the perimeter. Um, so. Uh, we, we need to see a lot of improvement. Um, you know, that was uh, that I, I thought defensively, um, you know, we, we played well enough to, to beat a lot of teams. Um, offensively, uh, we, we did not play well enough to, to beat good teams. And um, it's a spot we, we have to get a lot better in. And, you know, it just was one of those nights, too, where um, it was a kind of a different guy every single play. Um, so it'd be easier if it was one guy and you know, we, we look to replace him, um, but, you know, everybody kind of had their turn. Uh, we just have to get more consistent uh, offensively. Uh, we we got we to have a great week of practice this week um, to, to get us ready for Friday. But, uh, no, we, we need to see a big jump uh, offensively, and we're going to go up against another good defense. So it's a, it's a another challenge. Um, and it's one of the reasons we want to play these games, right? Like we, we could have – Played somebody last week that we could have that we were a lot better than and we, we could have got away with some of the mistakes that we made and we, we could have won big and everybody could have patted us on the back. Um, but uh, you, know, you go play a team like that to to expose those mistakes and so uh, you know it's uh, it's a great learning thing for us and um, something that that will make us a lot better if we respond in the correct way. Coming up on the Coach Nick Hart Show, we talk about this week's upcoming matchup with the Mount Carmel Golden Aces. You're listening to The Nick Hart Show, brought to you by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum, Hillside Gardens Landscaping and Garden Center, HMC Gears, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Nathan Belote, by Jarbo Tax Service, JMCO Technologies, 
Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated, K&K Excavating Incorporated, KC Fuquay State Farm Agent, Kathy Solman Photography, Key Construction Company Incorporated, Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC, by Lively Machine Company, Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, Parker Excavating, and by Perfect Climate Heating, Air and Plumbing. And then looking forward to this Friday in Mount Carmel, they have yet to play a game. So how difficult is it to scout for them? And is it a little similar to what you had going on last year or last week? Yeah, I think it's really difficult. And, and there's there's trade off. Um, you know, the, the old coaching adage is, you know, your, your biggest jump is from week one to week two. Um, so so we have that game under our belt and get rid of some of those Friday night nerves and, and guys that are making their first, um, you know, varsity start. Um, so, you know, we kind of have that under our belt. Um, you know, they have the luxury of being able to see us play um, in a game where, where we're trying to win. Um, so I think most years uh, you kind of go back to, you know, last year and what they did and everything. Um, the word on the coaching street is, you know, they're, they're running a different offense. Um, so, you know, you're, we're just kind of making an educated guess um, about what we're going to see and, and what they'll bring to the table on Friday night. So I think that kind of amplifies the, you know, we haven't seen them play a game. Um, we don't have any film of, of what they're doing. Um, so, you know, you're just trying to, you know, I think fortunately um, it's going to be similar to, to what Danville was doing or somewhat similar. Um, so, you know, we, we have a little background in that, um, but uh you know, we, we don't really know what they're doing. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to prepare our kids the best we can. And, um, you know, we're going to have to adjust on the fly uh, on Friday night. So, you know, teams running a flex bone variation offense. Um, you know, it's not like the spread that you see a bunch of other people running. It's different. And I, I think um, not having a lot of background information on what they're doing, um, you know, can make that preparation uh, very difficult. So, uh, you know, we're going to uh, – you know, prepare the best we can, and, and then we got to kind of go out and adjust on the fly. So again, I think there's a little bit of trade off. Um, they 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 have some scouting stuff on us. Um, we haven't really changed a lot since last year, so they can kind of go back to that. Um, our game was streamed on Friday, so I'm sure they've seen it. Um, if they didn't have somebody there, uh, but we do have that. Uh, you know, first game jitters, um, all that type of stuff out of our system. Um, so um, I, I think. They're two completely different things, but it probably ends up being uh, an even trade off. And if I had to pick one, I, I'd rather have the game under my belt. So, uh, um, you know, it's uh, it is what it is, um, kind of a unique situation. And we, we play an Illinois team week two next year and we'll, we'll be right back in this situation. But, uh, um, you know, it's uh, you know, I, I think both teams kind of have some advantages and disadvantages with with us having a game and then not. And with games like this or last week where you don't have much film, obviously for a lot of high school teams, the scout team is very important for a successful program. How do you make sure the scout team is ready to give varsity level looks in practice? Yeah, I mean, um, you, you want it to be as as good as it can be. Um, and you know, we kind of talk to our, our kids about this or our first or, or quote unquote starters or the, the varsity group. Um, you know, nobody's getting a varsity level scout team look. Like I, I, I don't care if you're at a school of three thousand kids or a school of three hundred kids. Um, there's a difference um between the the varsity and the scout team. Otherwise, the scout team would be on the varsity. Um, like so, there's there's always a gap. Um, and um, I do think it's important um that that you get the best possible look that you can. Um. And I thought last week our scout team did a great job uh, on both sides of the ball of, of giving us a good look um, and, and competing against our guys in practice. Um, so, like, this week to me, it, it's not so much the scout team. It's it's how good is our educated guess, um, you know, about what Mount Carmel is going to do offensively. Um, I think we have a, a, a decent idea of, of what they'll do defensively. I'm sure there will be some wrinkles. Um, but uh, – 
but offensively just, you know, <laughs> hopefully our, our educated guests is, is in the right ballpark and, and, you know, we've prepared our kids, uh, you know, the, the best that we can, but, uh, but yeah, I think there's always going to be that gap between the, the, the varsity and the scout team. It's just, you know, how good can those guys, um, replicate what you're going to see and, and, and how well are they going to compete on Tuesday and Wednesday in practice to, to give you a good look. Mount Carmel last year, obviously a tough team to beat. State runner-up in Illinois, Max Preps Illinois Player of the Year, Blaine Sisson. But they lost a lot coming into this year. Do you expect them to be as tough as an out this year as they were last season? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, um, I lived over there as a kid. Um, you know, my dad was the coach there and, um, you know, that program, um, if you look at it historically, um, for the past 40, 50 years, um, there's not a whole lot of down years, um, in, in that program's history. So, um, I, I think Mount Carmel is a program that that's kind of, uh, built themselves on, on not rebuilding. They, they reload and, and the next group steps up, um, and, and is ready to go and, um, Coach Brewer and Coach Buss and, and all those guys over there do a great job uh, with that program. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think the faces are going to be different. And, uh, you know, hopefully they have some of the the first game jitters that, that our new guys did last week um, uh, from a selfish standpoint. Um, but, yeah, I, I, that program's uh, always going to compete. They're going to be physical. They're going to be hard-nosed. Um, they're not going to make a lot of mistakes. Um and it's a program that's accustomed to winning. Um, you mentioned what they did last year, but you just look historically, um, you know, that that program wins games. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's you know, there's there's certain programs maybe where if it, they graduate a lot of people, you think they might have a little bit of a down year. Um, I think Mount Carmel is one of those that um, if you assume that, you're, you're probably going to be in for a long night um, because it's a very proud program. Um, th those kids expect to win. Um, so I'm sure they've they've worked hard in the weight room and, and on the field this summer, um, you know, to to get ready to go for this game, and um, that that's kind of what that program's built on, and um, we expect to to see their best and, and then come out and, and compete, and uh, um, you know I think it it should be uh, you know two great programs going at it just like it was last year. Coming up on the Coach Nick Hart Show, we talk about the excitement of a home opener and how the secondary proved everybody wrong. The Nick Hart Show on 89.1 The Bash is brought to you by Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, a and Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Homes, Carriage Inn, Chips, SellMyTees.com, by Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC, Shelter Insurance, by Davis Brothers, Daylight Land Management, LLC, Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Dillbeck Properties, Diversified Instruments, Duke Energy, Emerson Cattle Company, ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Lankford, by Fast Break Convenience Stores, by Flanders, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Foster Construction, Ryman Land Service LLC, by Hobstock Summerfest, and by Wabash Valley College. And with the home opener being this week, you get your first game at the Jewel, and Mount Carmel fans travel well. So what do you expect the atmosphere to be like, and how exciting is it to get that first home game of the year out of the way? Yeah, um, I think it should be a great atmosphere. Um, I thought it was a great atmosphere last year. Uh, when we played them, we had to kick off at like 8.30 um, because of uh, the heat index. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm sure that kept a lot of people at home as well. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully the weather cooperates with us on Friday. Uh, looks like we're the heat's going to break on Friday. So, uh, you know, it, it should be a great crowd, a uh, great atmosphere. Um, our parent group will have the, the Friday night lights going with the food trucks and, and the silent auction and everything that we do at our first home game. Um, so, uh, you know, it's always great to, to be at home. Um, especially when you, you know, you're coming off a, a two and a half hour trip, uh, for week one, it, it's really nice to, to walk out of the office or locker room door and, and be there and ready to go. So, uh, you know, it should be a, a great atmosphere. Um, you know, I, I know we always have great crowds at home. And, and like you said, uh, Mount Carmel's a proud football program. They'll, they'll travel really well. Um, so it should be a, 
a great atmosphere and, uh, you know, kind of what uh, Friday Night Lights and, and high school football is all about. And community is a big part of that Friday Night Lights and high school football. How important is the community, the student body, and the parents to a successful program? Uh, yeah, um, it's it's imperative, um, you know, just uh, and I think especially to run uh, a program first class, I think our, our community um, does a, a wonderful job of, of supporting our program. And you mentioned the parent in, involvement and, um, you know, or the way, you know, our Friday Night Lights is a, is a fundraiser for our, our parent club, um, you know, at this first home game. And, you know, that gets us stuff. We, we had charter buses to Danville last week. That was our parent group. Um, you know, community involvement, I think that goes down into the youth leagues and, and all that type of stuff. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, football's a, a great community sport and, and we have a great community that, that really gets by, behind our program, um, as does Mount Carmel. Um, and I think that's why it'll be a, a great atmosphere and an electric crowd uh, on Friday night because you have two proud communities, uh, you know, 15 minutes apart um, with, with proud football programs. Uh, it should be a, a great atmosphere. And with the offensive struggles last week, you you touched on this a little bit, but with the lack of film you have on Mount Carmel defensively, what is the plan of attack? Um, you know, I think uh, <laughs> when you perform the way we did offensively, um, not that you know we we haven't looked at their defense, and, and we're not trying to to do some certain things to their defense um, because, you know, that, that's, that's our job as a, as an offensive staff. Um, but I think right now um, for the main part, and, and this is with all due respect to Mount Carmel, this is just us. Um, the, the focus is us right now uh, because, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, we, we talked in our, our Monday meeting when we're kind of putting in, you know, some of the, the install and game plan and, um, you know, if we don't execute well, um, it, it doesn't matter uh, what goes up on a chalkboard or, you know, we don't have chalkboards anymore, drive race board or PowerPoint or whatever. It doesn't matter, um, you know, what kind of scheme is, is you know, thought up or, or how we're going to attack or we're going to do this or we're going to do that. Um, if you don't execute that, um, you know, all of that stuff becomes irrelevant. So, um, you know, I think the the focus is really on us and, and, and how we're going to execute. Um because again, uh, if we don't, it, it doesn't matter what what Mount Carmel's doing to us, uh, you know, schematically. Um, so, uh, you know, we obviously looked at them. We looked at what they did to us last year. Um, you know, Coach Buster, their defense coordinator, was the defense coordinator um, here for me uh, for at the beginning of, of my time here uh, for several years. So we know each other really well. I thought last year he did um, some good stuff to uh, kind of. Uh, counteract what what he thought we think we would think they were doing um so i'm sure he's got some some more stuff up his sleeve because he's a great football coach but uh no it, it, it's us and in, in, in how we execute that that's all that's our big focus right now and lastly coach one of the main narratives coming into this year was the inexperience of the secondary this year i think with the way they performed last week you can kind of put that behind you so now going forward how do you make sure they get even better than last week yeah um and i think you you know we kind of touched on a, i think you can see like through the course of the game um you know how much they improved i don't have the stats in front of me i think they threw for two 200 yards uh maybe um you know i think probably just off the top of my head you know, 120 of that or so, 100 of it um, was on two plays early in the game. Um, so I thought they they did a great job as the game went on. I thought we played good complementary defense where um, our front four uh, was putting some heat on the quarterback. I thought some of our our pressure packages got home. I know um, we had a, a pressure look on a, like a third and four, third and five, um, where we got a big sack and got off the field. Um, so I think we the other parts of the defense um, – you know, did a good job of, of helping those guys in the back end out. But, uh, no, I, I, I'm not concerned about them continuing to improve because I think it's a uh, a very competitive group. Um, I think those are guys that, uh, you know, really like to compete. Um, so so I, I don't have any doubts that, that they'll continue to improve. I think the one thing we can do a little bit better um, um, for an improvement standpoint, Becker, is 
is a little bit of like a situational awareness. Um, like we gave up a hitch on a fourth and two, um, you know, and, and just kind of understanding, um, you know, what we need to take away at, at certain points. And I think that's kind of the next big step for us back there in the back end. But uh, um, no, I, I think it's a very competitive group that, that will continue to improve as the year goes on. Well, coach, thank you so much for your time and good luck this Friday. All right. Thank you. This has been the Coach Nick Hart Show. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the Nick Hart Show, our weekly chat with the head coach of the Gibson Southern Titans, Nick Hart. It's brought to you by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, a t Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Homes, Carriage Inn, Chips, SellMyTees.com, by Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC, Shelter Insurance, by Davis Brothers, Daylight Land Management, LLC, Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Dillbeck Properties, Diversified Instruments, Duke Energy, Emerson Cattle Company, ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Lankford, by Fast Break Convenience Stores, by Flanders, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Foster Construction, Ryman Land Service LLC, by Hobstadt Summerfest, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum, Hillside Gardens Landscaping and Garden Center, HMC Gears, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Nathan Belote, by Jarbo Tax Service, JMCO Technologies, Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated, K&K Excavating Incorporated, KC Fuquay, State Farm Agent, Kathy Solman Photography, Key Construction Company Incorporated, Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC, by Lively Machine Company, Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, also by Parker Excavating, Perfect Climate Heating, Air, and Plumbing by Pole Concrete Construction, Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated by Pro Rehab of Hobstock, Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency, Rawhide Golf Supplies, Ryano Family Fitness, Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage, Shearer Monument, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law, PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, the Titan Youth Football League, by Varnado Construction, Bomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated, We Simply Clean, by Whitledge Tree Service, and Young's Auto Body. The Nick Hart Show, a special production of the Wabash Valley College Radio TV and Digital Media Department.